Hello and welcome to our second session on asthma. So today we are going to be looking at asthma in children. And my name is Ruth. I work with the Asthma Society of Ireland and I'm also self-employed running my own education and consultancy business for nurses and the public about different aspects of asthma. So today, as I said, we're going to look at um, minding your child who has asthma and different medications and how to use an asthma action plan. And we'll also talk about the five step rule for managing an acute asthma tax. So I'm just going to share my screen here and then we'll get started. And hopefully this will just ready to start here. Okay, as I said, we're going to look at all the different aspects in terms of what medications and um, give you some tips on um, managing your trigger factors and um, also talk a little bit about inhaler technique as well as I said the asthma action plan and the five step rule for asthma. So, and then I'll also leave you with some contact information as well if you need to contact the Asthma Society, for example, for uh, accessing our advice line, which is where you can speak to a respiratory nurse specialist, or you can contact us via our WhatsApp service either if you have any questions about your asthma. So, so basically, is there a cure for asthma? Asthma, can, asthma can't be cured. We don't have a cure, an asthma cure at the moment, but we can give you medication that can control it. And the most important thing I suppose to realise is that most young people and children can carry on and have a perfectly normal life and live a healthy and active lifestyle and be involved in all sorts of sports and activities um, whenever the time allows um, to keep themselves healthy. So for the majority of children, they actually can live a fulfilling and healthy life. So I suppose one of the first things to watch out for is to avoid your trigger factors. So we did speak about these on the first um, video that we did. Um, so again, looking out for know, know what your triggers are and sometimes it can be difficult actually to figure out what your triggers actually are. And it might take you a month or two or even longer to figure out what your child's triggers are. But it is important to know what they are because if you can avoid them. Now, of course, not all triggers can be avoided either. That's some things. But you can do, there are some things that you can actually do. So, for, for example, with when the pollen counts are high, like putting a bit of Vaseline on the tip of your nose, that will actually help to trap the pollen so that the pollen isn't getting down into the lungs and causing side effects. Um, or causing effects of your asthma. So the other one then say like at the moment in the cold, cold weather, um, it's useful to put a scarf or a snood over your mouth and nose when you're going outside and that will warm the air going into the airways and hopefully um, help eliminate some of the symptoms that your child might actually get. Obviously avoiding colds and flus and um, like things like taking vitamin D is actually very beneficial and very helpful uh, at this time of the year, particularly from September around to May. And just remember, I suppose, most problematic time of the year for asthma is September, October, followed by March, April. So they're kind of the two, and it's basically when the seasons are changing, when you get you know changes in temperatures, changes in the environment that actually can trigger all these different um, symptoms. Make sure that your child is using their inhaler, inhaler correctly. So again, using the Asthma Society website on asthma.ie and go into the section on inhaler technique and you can watch all the different videos there for all the different inhalers. Now, most children will be on spacer devices with their inhaler. So again, you can learn how to use the spacers and just check that your child is using it correctly on the um, website. For children over the age of seven or eight, they may be on different inhalers, maybe dry powdered inhalers so where they don't need to use a space so again you can check out all the different techniques for all the different inhalers on the website and um, as I said most children actually can use a dry powder inhaler from the age of seven or eight upwards but again and it's still okay if your child is still using a spacer by the age of nine or ten that's perfectly all right they're, they're, they're still getting their medication it's also important obviously to take your medication as prescribed by your by the doctor so if you're prescribed most medications will be prescribed twice a day. Most of the preventer medications will be prescribed twice a day or preventer or controller medicines. The other one to watch out for then is if your child is using or needing a lot of blue inhaler or Ventolin inhaler, that would tell us that your child's asthma is not controlled. So, or there's something not right with it. So they may need to have um, their medication increased by their doctor. So again, if that's the case, just please talk to your local, your, to your GP about this and get the medication changed or reviewed. Never ignore asthma symptoms. So if your child does kind of have asthma symptoms, and just don't forget about the, old, the the tummy pain in children, particularly in smaller children, that can manifest itself as chest tightness. So again, just never ignore them. Please treat them with, with some blue inhaler. And if, as I say, if this is happening quite a lot, then they need to, you need to speak to the doctor. 
and then complete an asthma action plan. So everybody, it doesn't matter what age you are, whether you're a child or adult, should have an asthma action plan. And we'll go through that later and what it looks like and what needs to go in on it. And again, if the medication has been changed over recent times, that needs to be, you need to get a new plan and update it. That's the, one of the important things is to keep the plan updated. So basically, there are two basic types of medications for managing your asthma. So one is the most important one is your controller medication, or people would know it as a preventer medication. So again, this controls the swelling and redness, the inflammation in the airways. And it is really important to do that, as we said earlier, that, um, you know, to stop any long term lasting effects from asthma coming on. So it is very important, as and it is always medication that is taken twice a day. Um, there is a small bit of steroid in it, but the amount of steroid that's actually in these inhalers is extremely small. So it's so small that when you inhale it into the lungs, that it doesn't actually go anywhere else. It, most of these medications actually, it works in the lungs, it stays in the lungs, and there's no absorption into the general, into the bloodstream, unlike the steroid tablets. And that's where the problem is with children, that if they're getting a lot of courses of steroid tablets, it can affect their growth. Because every time they have a course of steroid tablets, their bones stop growing for three months. So obviously we want to avoid that. Now that does not happen with the inhaler steroids. So the inhaler steroids are extremely safe to take. Um, they do, the build up, I suppose, the, it does take a bit of time for them to build up in the airways. Sometimes you know, if you're starting off these medications new, it can take up to five days, maybe up to 10 days, depending on which inhaler it is, for them to work. So you just have to be patient with it um, and use that. But once it starts working, it works um, you know, very effectively. Usually they are taken every day, mostly taken twice a day, morning and evening. Kind of try and keep it kind of as close to 12 hours apart as you can. But if you can't, that's fine. You know, if you take it in the morning time, if your child takes it at 8 o'clock in the morning time and they're going to bed at 7 o'clock that evening, that's perfectly fine. That's not a problem. Um, but as I said, the most important thing is that you take this, this medication is taken even when you are feeling well. So it is important to get into a routine of taking it. So try and get into it. Maybe they take it at breakfast time whenever they're having their breakfast and then again when they're washing their teeth at night before they go to bed. So just to have some sort of a routine with it. It is also important that the child actually rinses their mouth out after using it to cut down the chances of them getting hoarse with medication or getting oral thrush. So that's the controller medications. So they're usually kind of the autumnal colours. They're usually brown in nature, orange, or there's a dark red one as well, which you usually use in older children. But that, you know, as I say, usually the, the browny colours and the orangey colours is what they look like. Then you have the relievers, and everybody knows these. These are relievers are the blue inhaler called Ventolin. And there's also another one called Bricknell, but Ventolin probably is the most common one. So again, these are taken immediately to relieve any symptoms, hence why they are called a reliever. So you take it, you suddenly get wheezy, you take your medication, you take the blue medication. I suppose the important thing I suppose about the blue medication is that if you're using it more than twice a week or if a child is using it more than once a week, if they're under the age of six, that will indicate to us that their asthma is not well controlled and they may need to have a review of their controller medication. So just keep those pickers in mind. So more than twice a week for an older child, more than once a week for a child under six, um, you need to take action. Um, they do work very quickly. So when you take it, it works within five minutes. The last in the year is for up to four hours. Um, and the way they work is they, re they relax the muscles around the narrowed airways and it opens them up so it makes it easier to breathe. So again, these are just used as and when needed. They're not used to before medication. The old way of taking these inhalers was that you always took it before you took your brown inhaler and then the brown inhaler was supposedly supposed to work better and more efficiently. That's no longer the case. So you don't do that. So it's just using the brown inhaler twice a day and then this one whenever you need to use it. So this is what a spacer looks like. There are these kind of holding chambers. Um, and the, the basically there's three different ones in the market. There's the volumatic, there's the aero chamber and the baby hater. The volumatic and the baby hater are both on the medical card. So you can get them if you have a medical card, they're available on that. The aero chamber then unfortunately is not. It is the more expensive of the three. Um, but there is a, a good side to this is that the aero chamber actually, when you get it, it's actually fine for two years. You don't need to change it, okay? But if the, with these other inhalers, both the volumatic and the baby inhaler need to be changed every six months. Using a spacer is really important with this particular type of inhaler, which is the standard type of inhaler. You've seen people using these with blues and browns and all that. So again, when you actually press that inhaler and if you put that straight into your mouth and press the straight into your mouth, that medicine comes out at 60 miles an hour. The quickest breath you can take in is 30 miles an hour. 
So again, a lot of that medication is going to sit in your mouth and throat and it's not going to get into your lungs at all. So by using the spacer, it just makes it, you don't have to be worrying about coordinating your breathing and your pressing of this. So you just put one puff of it into the spacer and you breathe in and out five to 10 times and then put in the next puff and breathe in and out again five times, five to 10 times. So again, it just makes life a little bit easier for taking inhalers and they are much more effective. So everybody actually should have one of these spacer devices for their blue inhaler in the case, case of an acute asthma attack. And we will be talking about that later and I'll explain that a little bit more. So, but as I say, it does actually use, make taking the brown medication a lot easier. It does actually reduce the chance to be getting the hoarseness and the oral thrush as well. So it's well worth doing that. And so you can actually get these from your local pharmacy as well. And how to use them, how to use the spacers. There's actually videos on how to use the spacers on our website, um, which are worth looking at because um, there's two different ways you can use them. There's no one way better than the other. Um, but again, it is worth looking at. I suppose the one that has the, what they call the multiple breath technique, is probably the, the easier one for children because they just breathe in there continuously through the spacer. Right. So other medication then for asthma will include things like tablets. And there's one tablet called Monte Lucas or Singular, which is also available in a sachet form which you can mix into a yogurt and that again, again, just give it to a smaller child. They're very useful in people that actually have, or children that actually have allergic rhinitis or hay fever problems as well with their asthma. So definitely they are useful. Um, they do have to be taken in the evening time because they don't work particularly well if you give them during the morning. So again, take them around six o'clock in the evening time because if you take them too, too close to bedtime, they, they can cause side effects as such as nightmares. Then there's these combination inhalers. Um, these are beneficial whenever your your controller medication is not maybe controlling things as good as we'd like. So we often put people onto these combination inhalers. So these inhalers are actually a mixture of steroid and airway opener. So the airway opener that's in these is quite different to that that's in the Ventolin inhaler. Um, again, it, it, it works for about 12 hours, the airway opener here. So some children might actually be on these. And then you have the old oral steroid tablets. Now, these are very beneficial for an acute asthma attack but other than that they really should not be used on a regular basis and um, so I said they're life-saving when it comes to an acute asthma attack but again we kind of want to avoid giving these to children so it's really important we would much prefer the children child to be on the inhaled steroid and not to be taking these but if they need them they need them that's, that's, well, that's the important thing to say about them so some tips about medication, then always give your medication as described by the doctor. Um, always a problem, this kind of giving it, it's fine kind of when there's, a, you know, when there's a normal routine in a house where your kind of school is on. We know that kind of children are very much better, much better at taking their medications during school time and school terms because they're in a routine. They take it in the morning before they go to school, they take it in the evening time before they go to bed. Whereas I would, my experience is that whenever holidays kick in, sometimes that maybe the adherence to medication isn't as good as it should be. But we should try and kind of keep some sort of a routine going that they're um, taking their medication. So even in the current climate, I guess when kids are off school at the moment or being homeschooled, it's just to make sure you have your routine, which you know is part of the course. It's what's recommended now anyway in terms of homeschooling. And um, so include that in that routine that they get their medication. If your child is using their reliever more than twice a week, that is if they're over six and under six is once a week, then you need to see, talk to your GP. Again, it's advisable not to actually go to the practice at the moment, but please give your GP a phone call if that is the case. Um, always make sure that you do have access, the child always has access to their blue inhaler. That's important, I suppose, in terms of whenever children go to training and to football and all the different activities they do, that they do actually have their blue inhaler with them. Again, if it's an older child, they may very well need, um, rather than having to bring a spacer with you, they may a dry powder device might work better for them. So that's actually worth talking to your practice nurse, your GP about that, about changing the blue inhaler to a dry powder device that is a bit more portable. And of course, every time you go to your doctor, your child's inhaler technique should be checked every time, just to make sure, because little habits creep in all the time. And that's, as I said, the website for checking um, inhaler technique. Just go, there's a lot of information on that website, but if you go to the section on inhaler technique videos, you can see that. And you can see also, as I said there, how to use your spacer as well. But it is really, really important that the, te the inhaler technique is as good as it can be. So now we're going to talk about um, signs of an asthma attack. So if somebody is actually having an asthma attack, they will have one or more of the following symptoms. 
So coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, they're too breathless to finish a sentence. So that means that if you talk to somebody or ask them a question, all they're answering you is in yeses or noes in one word it answers. So they won't actually, if you ask them actually to try and string a sentence together, they won't be able to, that's not a good sign. And if they're too breathless to walk, sleep or eat, or, you know, keep up with their brothers and sisters and walk, you know, running around outside they don't want to, um, you know, and, and they have can maybe wheezy as well, but they're too breathless actually to run or walk. And then the other sign then is their lips turning blue. Now, the thing is to remember, I guess, is that not everybody's going to get all these seven symptoms when they're having an acute asthma attack. But you, you will more than likely have a combination of a couple of them. So any combination at all, or even if, even just pure wheeze in the zone, if somebody is really, really wheezy on their own, that would tell us then they need to be getting help. So this is the five-step rule. And again, you can download this um, from the Asthma Society. And if you have a printer at home, it's probably a good idea to print this off and pop it up in your fridge to have it. Everybody should know how to do this. You may never... The other thing to remember, I suppose, about asthma, a lot of people have asthma, but never, ever get an acute asthma attack but the problem is is that once you have asthma there is that chance or risk is still there so it's really important to know what to do so the first thing is to sit down and sit up nice and straight stay calm don't lie down because if you lie down you're not going to be able to breathe or you're not going to be able to open your lungs so it's really important that you sit up take slow deep slow steady breaths um, and then you, what you do is you give the blue inhaler and this is why you, everybody needs a spacer. So you need a spacer. So for a child over the age of six, you give one puff of the blue inhaler every minute for 10 minutes. And then for children under six, you give six puffs over a 10 minute period. And you also, when you're that done, then you call the emergency services or you can go to your GP if it's during the day and you can, if the child isn't too distressed, um, but still they're not right you can go obviously call your gp but definitely you know you need to call somebody and then while you're waiting on the ambulance to arrive and certainly you repeat the whole procedure again of giving the, the medication so in this situation you might think this is an awful lot of ventilin but in this situation it's you need to give lots of ventilin okay the important thing here is actually that you are followed up the child is definitely followed up now they might not be sick enough to need the 112 or the 999 emergency services, but they need to be followed up by the GP because these children do need steroid tablets in this situation and um, to stop this happening again. And you know that, and they do need proper follow-up to see why it actually happened in the first place, what was the underlying cause or reason for it. Again, these car we actually have this on a card as well that you can, can be kept in wallets, but unfortunately there's nobody in our offices at the moment to send these out. But in the meantime, what you can do is download this from our website. So now the next thing then to talk about the asthma action plan. So the asthma action plan is a document that contains all the information that you need to keep your asthma under control. So everybody with asthma should have one of these. And the important thing is, is that this is actually filled out with your health professional and that it is updated, particularly if medication gets changed. So back there was, this is what one side of it looks like. And then on the other side of this, then you have three different zones. You have a green zone, an orange zone, and a red zone. So the green zone is what you do when your asthma is well, and when you are well, and it's everyday asthma care. So things like up here, you'll see it on all the three different sides. It's going to tell you what symptoms and that to look out for or not to look out for. So when your asthma is controlled, you don't have any cough, wheezing, or shortness of breath. You can exercise without any having any symptoms. Your asthma doesn't wake you up at night, which is another big warning sign for uncontrolled asthma is waking up at night. And in particular with children, it can be a very early morning symptoms as well. So just you know, the way children get up kind of at five or six o'clock in the morning. If their asthma is bothering them then, well then that's a sign that something is not right. Um, the fact that you don't need to take your medication, don't, sorry, you don't need to take days off school. Um, your child doesn't need to miss school because of their asthma. Um, your reliever inhaler is twice a week or less if you're over the age of six and once a week or less than if you're under the age of six. So they are kind of, that's when your asthma is good. So then also, if you have a peak flow meter, then you can actually get the GP to, they can pop the, what the predictors are, what you should be getting in here. This plan, you don't actually have to have a peak flow meter for this. Um, your peak flow is the blowing test that the GP will get you to do to assess your asthma. So, but you actually can have this plan and just be very clued into the symptoms. You don't, you know, it is great if you have one of these, but it's not essential. So again, down here, and this is where the GP also comes in about filling in your, the name of your medication. So the controller medication gets filled in here, the color of the inhaler, how many times you take it per day. 
And likewise with the reliever inhaler here, you put the name of the inhaler in here, the color of it, and the number of times per day. And again, it just a few little tips here about always carrying your blue inhaler with you. And you take two puffs of whenever you before exercise if needed. Some people do have to, and some children may need to do that. And when you're well, you have you take any other medication as well. Whatever other if you are on other medication like the, the tablets I was talking about earlier, like the Monte Lucast, or you could be on the child could actually could be also be on a nasal spray for hay fever as well. So then you move into the orange zone. Say if your child then suddenly gets a cold, for example, um, and the next thing they're not that well. So again, there's an assessment tool up here at the top. So again, things like your about the child's asthma being you're going to have some of these symptoms, okay, one or all of them. Um, you may have symptoms of exercise. Your symptoms are waking you up at night. You need to take your days off school. Um, if you're taking your reliever inhaler more than twice a week and more than once a week if you're under six, and then the peak flow is dropping and you have you feel as if your child may have a cold or flu. So that's kind of the orange zone. So you actually haven't got too sick yet, but this is where you act. And again, the GP would have filled in here your medication and the number of puffs you take. And this may very well have been increased. So say, for example, on the green page, if you're on one puff twice a day here, that's what your normal child is normally on, up in the orange zone here, you may very well be told to take two puffs or even three or even four puffs twice a day, depending on whatever inhaler you're on. So again, that's where the change is going to be there. And then also, you may very well be told here at this stage for the blue inhaler to give this one two puffs four times a day as well to, to manage any symptoms. And again, this is all about stopping, preventing anything more severe coming on, preventing yourself moving into the next page, which is actually the red page. Some doctors here also give some steroid tablets to be taken here. But the, again, not that does not happen with every single person. So again, if you've been giving one course of oral steroids tablets to give your child, you then need to contact the GP to get the second and third doses because that won't be enough. And won't, that's the most important thing with these tablets is that you are going to need at least three to five days of them. So um, just having one day is not enough. So it is really important that you contact somebody. And again, if you or your child is feeling still feeling unwell and not improving or concerned at all, you know, contact your GP or nurse. Or if it's out of hours, go to the emergency department. Okay. So then this is your red zone. So basically, this is what we were talking about earlier, the five step rule. OK, so again, the idea is, is that if you get yourself, get the child sorted in the orange zone, it prevents them moving into the red zone. And again, just remember that this red zone is an emergency and you need to act now following the five step rule, calling the emergency services, which we discussed earlier. And remember, always at all, all costs using a spacer is the most important thing for giving the blue inhaler in this situation. So on the other side of the asthma action plan, then there is just a little bit there about medication. So all your different controller medications, whatever the child, your child might be on. So whatever, that's the controller medications that may be Becotide, for example, which is the brown inhaler. Any other controller medication, which would be the tablets, the, the Monte Lucast, or and nasal sprays, if they're on those for and um, they're allergic rhinitis or their hay fever and any other uh, if they're on allergy treatments. Now, remember that not, not, all, not all children are going to be on these, but some of them might be. And then there's just some information there about the different medications, why you need to take the controller medication and the reliever medication. And again, there's a space down there that you actually can fill out then what your child's um, trigger factors might be. And there possibly might not be enough space there, but just, you know, whatever. Some children may have a lot more than four trigger factors. So you, it's no harm to put them in there so just to make people aware. A um, few tips here on how your asthma action plan is going to work for you. So it's really important that, you know, you tell your family, tell everybody around in your household that this is your child's asthma action plan. Keep it on the fridge. Another idea is actually is a good one is to take a photograph of it and have it on your phone. Because again, if you go into the hospital or you go to the GP and you don't have the plan with you, at least then you can refer to it on your phone. Um, as I say, share a copy of the plan with your family members, friends and caregivers, particularly if the child is going to the creche. Really important that the creche has this and your school, the child's school also has a copy of it as well. And just remember, if it is updated, just remember to give the updated copy as well, whenever it is updated, or if it does change. Um, it, you know, it's no harm just to keep a check on it regularly, so just to make sure that everything your, your child is doing okay and they're not having any symptoms, and it can just kind of bring things 
you know, remind you about things. And always bring your asthma action plan to your healthcare appointments as well and your emergency department visits. And say, so don't be putting a press that you can't find it, pin it up on the fridge or on the notice board in your kitchen and just always have it to hand. And if possible, always have an asthma review at least once a year and have your inhaler technique checked. So as I say, it is no harm, you know, maybe even at home to go onto the website, check the technique and get your child to, che to check it. The other thing that's actually on our website is our kids corner. So there is actually a section on the website for children that they can do different activities about their asthma as well, just to make you aware of that. And just other important things about looking after yourself and your asthma, your child's asthma, just to make sure they're active, you know, they're out and about, they're being involved in things whenever they can do. Um, and obviously just... The smoking then is another one, of course, which we did speak about the last time as well on quitting smoking for parents that might smoke. Just remember that it is on your breath and on your clothes for four hours afterwards. And um, so, you know, ideally quitting smoking is the best thing rather than going outside and smoking. Um, advice line, which I'll talk about later, okay, but how you can actually talk to a respiratory nurse specialist. Oh, this is it here, actually. So we have our advice line number there. So you can give us a call on that and book an appointment to speak to a respiratory nurse specialist if you have any concerns about your child's asthma. And then the beating breathlessness, that's our WhatsApp service. So you can actually, if you don't want to speak to somebody and just want a quick answer to something, you can just send us a message on that number and um, we'll get back to you within a couple of days with that. Usually we're back to you on the day that you send it, but if, especially if it comes in over a weekend, we obviously don't work weekends or bank holidays, so we, we get back to you as soon as we can. So that's it. Um, thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you got something out of the presentation today, and thank you to Longford Libraries for asking me to do these, these two sessions with you.